Good afternoon. Um, I'm sure you've been coped with hundreds and thousands of bubbles, but this afternoon, um, I can't cope with them, so one bubble, um, but in odd spaces, so not, not your ordinary space. So um, the basic isometric problem, seeking least perimeter to enclose a given area. Um, Now, in 2D, in ordinary Euclidean space, for a given area, uh, the bubble would be circular and it could be anywhere on the plane. They'd be equivalent. And to make it even simpler, if we look at 1D, so, and I'm going to be doing quite a lot on just one dimensional bubbles because the maths works to start with. Um, so again, if we have a, a bubble in 1D, just on a line, in Euclidean space, for a given length, given area, it could be anywhere on the line, they're equivalent. Um, that's the definition of what we mean by a density on the surface or, or a line. So it's a positive function and it weights the perimeter and the area equally. Um, so it could be a physical density, but there's a lot of work that's been done on gas densities, probability on the plane. And this is what we mean, this is how we do the, the work in. So suppose in, in 2D, instead of a uniform density, we've got a radial density function which weights the perimeter and the area. Then the perimeter of a circle sent to the origin would have that function, it'd be two pi r f of r, and the area would be the integral um, from zero to the radius. And the question you're gonna look at first of all is if we're given a fixed, area weighted with this density, where would the bubble appear on the plane to minimize the perimeter? And if we do the same thing in one dimension, um, so we've got a symmetric density function um, which weights perimeter and the length. So in this case, uh, the weighted endpoints of the interval would be the perimeter. So we've got f of alpha plus f of beta, and the, the length would be the integral of the function over the interval. And same question, where would the interval end up on the line to minimize the perimeter? And the answers are, are not the obvious ones. Um, there was work done in 2010, uh, Dahlberg uh, and others, and he proved that if you have a density function r to the n, uh, with n positive, um, the minimal solution is a circle that touches the origin, not as you would perhaps initially expect, centered on the origin. So, Given the density r to the n, n greater than zero, that's the isoparametric solution, the circle touching the origin. Um, a bit later, um, in a, a Frank Morgan summer school, some uh, a group of undergraduates did the same work on 1D, and they came up with the equivalent uh, solution. So in 1D, if you've got a symmetric density function mod x to the n, n positive, the outcome is an interval that touches the origin. Um, now, it seemed a little unrealistic to have a density function that took zero at the origin. 
So what we're looking at is a variation in this. And to start with, we're going to work in 1D because I can do the maths and we get some nice results. And then we look at 2D later. So if we take a symmetric density function mod x to the n plus a and real values a and n both greater than zero. Um, first of all, um, I can show that the solution is going to be a single interval that includes the origin. So it's connected single interval. And I'm going to work with Lagrange multiplier method. So minimizing the perimeter given the constant weighted mass stroke area. And the first result, when we look at n equals two, um, because that is the only uh, value of n for which I can get a complete solution. So I can do all the maths, I can get the uh, nice result. And what we find is that um, if it's x squared, then the Dahlberg would say it's a circle touching the origin. As we, yeah. Uh, sorry, yes, yeah. Sorry, it's the first bit doing 1D, yeah. Um, yeah, as we increase A, the interval goes from being asymmetric to symmetric. So it gradually moves across the origin uh, straddles the origin um, until the, if you reach critical value for A, which depends on the original mass of the interval, so I call that M0, um, and then from A, when A is greater than that critical value of A, the interval then stays symmetric about the origin and gets physically looking smaller. Um, the perimeter is actually constant up until that critical value of A, uh, and then it increases. And that, those equations um, describe it exactly. Now, so I haven't spent, um, I haven't overspent on the graphics here. So as we increase A, it does that, and then past the critical value, it does not. Please ask questions as we go along, if you, if you wish. So um, with this problem, I, I thought I had understood at the outset that you were fixing the length. Uh, fixing a weighted area for in 2D, or fixing a weighted length in 1D. Okay. So the, in, the integral between the ends of the interval is constant, and that's what I call the M0. So that stays constant, and then it moves to minimize the perimeter as we increase A. <coughs> um, so it gets, it gets short just because weight right. is constant. Now, um, the graph here, well, the graphs show, so the lines show the calculated results of those equations. So as we increase A, so remember um, the power is still squared, it's N equals two. As we increase A, the interval goes from being asymmetric to symmetric um, until A reaches a critical value at that point. And then it stays symmetric and it gets smaller. Um, the perimeter stays surprisingly, stays constant to that point and then it increases. Um, I've also modeled this in surface evolver, and the triangles and the dots and the squares are the results from putting an interval on surface evolver, setting it off, and plotting the results. And they match perfectly. Now, the harder ones, different values of n. Um, between zero and one, uh, as I increase A, the interval stays asymmetric. One end fixes, sticks at the origin. The other end becomes cl comes closer to the origin. So interval alpha beta, that's 
the equation that describes where beta is and, and have an equation for the perimeter. Um, so those equa that equation is not, is, is not soluble analytically, except for very few values of n. So again, one end is stuck at the origin for any n as long as it's greater than zero. Um, for n between zero and one. Right, so, so yeah. in particular, if I go to n equals zero, where you have a constant weighted. Yeah, then, that would be the back original the case. Meridian space, and it would be, it would say anywhere, I guess. So I just, I'm trying to understand the new yeah. it as a singular limit. Yeah. Um, I think any n whatsoever that's greater than zero or one of the n's stay stuck at the, at the origin. Any n for n greater than zero and less than or equal to one, one n sticks at the origin. Yeah. If we take n between one and two, then um, as I increase a, it starts off asymmetric, so one end at the origin and then beta along the line. As I increase a, it becomes asymmetric um, with, again, a critical value for the point at which um, it becomes exactly symmetric. So I can describe given n between one and two, and given the, the original constant mass, I can describe the point of which it becomes symmetric. Um, the perimeter increases um, as a increase as a increases. And the last case for n greater than two, um, <coughs> it becomes symmetric um, at a critical value. And at this time, the perimeter, as I increase a, actually dips. The perimeter uh, declines um, as a increases until it reaches a minimum value, um, which I can describe by those equations. If I show you the graphs, it might be, might help. So for example, um, for n is 1.5, it starts off asymmetric, becomes symmetric at a critical value, and then stays symmetric. The perimeter increases all the time. But if I take a value greater than two, for example, four, uh, same thing, sort of thing happens with the interval, it becomes symmetric. Um, but that's an increase A, the perimeter actually drops to a, a minimum point and then increases. So you get a variety of outcomes depending on the value of N. And I can actually plot the critical values and the minimum, uh, the value of A for which the perimeter is a minimum for N greater than two. Um, and these tend to limit. I, um, I think that one is quarter and the one above comes down to a half. Right, now, if we look at 2D, so we're looking at two dimensions, um, and to start with, I'm making a very big assumption. I'm assuming that the outcome is going to be a circle. And then later I find that it is not necessarily the case. But if I make assumptions with the Lagrange method that, um, the isoparametric solution is going to be a circle. And I do the calculations and the lines 
on here are the outcome of the calculations. As I increase uh, A, and the squares and the triangles are the result of plotting it in the surface evolver. So it looks as though I can calculate the outcomes perfectly for n equals 2 in 2D. Um, and I'll show you some superb graphics again in a moment to illustrate that. If I make n equals 4, though, it doesn't quite work. Um, so the, the lines are the outcome are the lines of the result of the equations that I've calculated, assuming that it's a circular solution. And the triangles and the squares are the result of putting it into surface evolver and seeing what we get. And they don't quite match. Um, the first thought was we hadn't programmed surface evolver properly, but I think the conclusion I'm coming to is the assumption that it's a circle is not uh, correct uh, for n other than two. So in 2D, um, from the Dahlberg, a equals zero, it's a circle that goes through the origin, so it's asymmetric. As I increase a, it, a reaches a critical value solution that circle center of the origin. Um, if I make A greater than that, um, it stays a circle center of the origin. Uh, the radius becomes smaller and the perimeter reaches a minimum before increasing again. Now, that is not necessarily true for N greater than two. It, it works nicely for two, I don't think this is right for n greater than two. Um, so what happens if n is two, increase a, get that, to the a reaches a critical value, make a bigger, and the circle just gets smaller. Um, the perimeter increases, circle gets smaller. Um, my assumption, for n greater than two was that it stays a circle and it gets bigger and then it gets smaller again. But that is probably incorrect and that's what I'm working on at the moment. So, so far um, in 1D, everything is almost completely proved and the simulations match the calculations very well. Um, for 2D, uh, we've got some conjectures, some of which are proved for particular powers of n, uh, and others that are um, not yet proved, or perhaps incorrect. Um, well, one thing that's interesting here is, I think, that if a is greater than that critical value, the density becomes log convex. And then it should match the outcome of um, log convex conjecture, which was proved in 2013, which is that um, for a, a log convex um, radi radially symmetric function, the outcome is always circle center of the origin. So I think it sort of works with that for a bigger than the a critical. Um, but that, again, that's one little thing, that's one, not little thing, one thing I'm working on. Right, however, so this is the interesting bit. Um, if n is greater than two, perhaps it doesn't maintain a circular shape. Um, and if you plot it in surface evolver, simulate it in surface evolver, it comes out that sort of shape. Um, which is not really a circle. So I think there's work to do for n greater than two. So one thing I've been doing is looking at, can I approach this from different direction? Rather than the Lagrange, um, and in my reading, I've 
been finding a few other approaches. There was a paper by um, Ivan Corwin uh, and others who used that as an equation for generalized curvature. So the kappa is the standard curvature and the extra term there takes account of the density function. And it's, if the density function is written in that form as an exponential, And in polar coordinates, we get that expression. And if I assume a circle for n equals two and a small value of a, and I put it into there, I do get a constant come out of it, which in a, confirms my assumption that the outcome is a circle for n equals two. So that was a, a nice result. And another paper, 2011, um, Kolesnikov, he developed this equation. If we have, um, if you have a minimal set of that form and where f of r is a solution to that equation, um, yeah, that's a min, a min, a is a minimal set if you can have f of r, which is a solution to that equation. When we're pointing out that the zero is the theta. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes, that was a, an early mistake. I haven't corrected on that. Sorry. Yes. Um, this format for that uh, set is a result of a symmetrization. So starting from any set, any um, shape that includes the origin, now if it's symmetrized, that's the format, that's the sort of format that comes out of it. So that's where that format comes from. And I don't did the same again. If I assume a circle, as the outcome for n equals two and the low value of a, that c comes out to that value. So it, it all sort of fits in together, it's consistent. Um, and what's nice is that apart from the sign, they're all the same. So the generalized curvature from Corwin comes out to that value. The C, the constant in Kolesnikov, comes out to that. And the multiplier in the Lagrange method was that as well. Um, so this is where I'm, I'm sort of getting to at the moment with lots of questions. Um, does this hold for other values of n um, and other values of a? Uh, I've shown that. If you take a density r squared plus a, as a increases, the circle migrates to the center, maintains the same radius, and I've shown that these three constants still hold. So I'm very happy with that. Um, and for a density r to the n where n is even and a is zero, they're the same, but that's a, it's a bit of a special case. So what I'm, where I've got to at the moment, one of the things I'm doing at the moment is trying to find out whether those equations are equivalent because all the work I've done so far uh, for solutions that work, that generalized curvature value comes out to be the same as that constant um, in the Kolesnikov paper. Um, and in reading all the literature, I've not yet managed to find a paper that matches those two together um, and indicates any connection between those. But this seems to be, um, but I haven't managed to do that yet. And then another problem is um, for a given density function, can I solve 
these equations to obtain a solution. So for that, for example, for that uh, n equals four, that ovoid shape, um, what's the equation of that shape? So I would like to be able to solve one or other of those. So given the constant generalized curvature or constant value C, can I solve that and can I get uh, the equation of that curve? So uh, what am I doing now? I'm trying to prove the conjectures for 2D, um, extend the results to negative values of N. That's the really hard bit. I can't do it at the moment. So the equivalence of those equations, if, if that is true, um, then find the equation of that curve that they've simulated in solution um, in surface in order and try to relate the critical value of A to log convex density. Um, and also perhaps extend some of this work to um, work in sectors um, rather than the whole plane. Uh, because there's been some interest in papers that look at densities in sectors with Gaussian density and the, the curves that join the edge of the sectors are not necessarily straight lines or arcs of circles. They tend to be odd shaped polygons or polygons with a little bend in the end. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of interest in work to do there. And I'd like to approach that with this R to the N plus A density and see what I can get. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. For, for me to understand, um, uh, so if I imagine uh, your system to be a bubble, uh, but a bubble that's sort of trapped between two parallel flights, yeah, or two D, yeah, where one of the two flights follows the follows your density function. Would that be a system which sort of mimics what you're doing? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're creating a slit where the yeah. height of the slit varies according to some function, and then you're looking at a bubble between that. Is, is that what you're is that in essence? It's not doing? how I pictured it. Um it may be analogous. Yes, I'm thinking more of a um so um, a field, an electric field or some sort of field that's con controlling um, the bubble. But that might be analogous to it, yes. That might be a yeah. pretty easy way to make a bubble like it. Is, is it given that that would have this same weighting from the true energy? Well, I don't know. I have to have a question. But I was kind of thinking that there'd be you another know, some really beautiful representations of the Huygens principle, where you have, um, you're basically creating, uh, uh, you, know, you take two perfect feet, right? and then you make the diameter, as far as the distance between them different, right? and then you're starting to grow kind of minimum surface between them. And these, uh, will basically follow the same path that, that light would follow in different refractive media. It's a really beautiful uh, one where you can make use of that. Uh, you know, you're making use of the dimension that doesn't interest you yeah. to encode uh, a field. I will look at that. Thank you. That's very, it's a nice way of looking at so if you were between a, a plane and a, a hemisphere, you know, a curvature. For the non circular shift of two dimensions, are you showing this for exponent part of the floor? Yeah. Did you try higher values? 
Like, yeah, see, some enormously large value. No, I haven't. Um, um, even in surface of or something, no, I haven't. Yeah, it'd be very quick to 20 do. or something. See if it's, yeah, more um, obviously not a circle. Yeah, no, I haven't, but um, I'm becoming more and more convinced that it's not a circle, and I'm trying to work out what the equation with is. The n, n equals two uh, does turn out to be a very special case. It's the only one that I could solve every equation and plot everything perfectly. No, it will it will it will become a circle, won't it? It will tend to a circle as a whatever the value of n as a increases, uh, the r to the n becomes the trivial bit, and it's the a that takes over. So I think it will end up for large a, whatever n is, as a circle set to the origin. But in between, um, I think you're you're right to have a have a look at high powers of n and small values of a. Um, I understand that um, when you have uh, when it's um, absolute value of x to the n, but it's been shown that it's just one w you get it's the minimum. Yes. Is, the, is it is it the case that in some I, 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 it makes sense that in the cases you're looking at it wouldn't be, but in general, is it possible to get a sort of that it would be a phone from just the minimum? You know, with uh, multiple doubles. You know, yeah, I don't think so. You could uh, correct me some other things, but, uh, it might make them put a little bit on the In in one D, if you specify uh, two bubbles of different areas, um, you you can get some unusual. Besides, so if you specify two bubbles of different area, there are different outcomes available. One of them is with one bubble that side, and the other one that side. I think I'm just trying to remember. Um, but depending on the ratio of these areas, you can also get an outcome where you get one bit of the bubble, one of the bubbles in the middle, and the minimal solution is splits the other bubble in two to give the, the smallest perimeter. Um, and it depends. Uh, very precisely on the power of n, on the n, and on the ratio of the areas. Um, well, I can't remember the exact outcomes, but you do get that, yes. So it suddenly, it suddenly changes, as you, increase, as you change the ratio, the minimal solution will change suddenly from that to that format. I was just thinking about the limit that then tends to infinity. It would depend on the size of the bubble if you can assume that what the function but what the function will look like is sort of like that, right? It's that yeah. infinity. And so it, it doesn't do this. No. Um but as I said um earlier, um other work has been done in sectors with different densities. Um, and depending on the area of the bubble, you get an outcome which is that, or uh, an outcome 
which is that shape. And it, the outcome varies from that to that, depending on the area and depending on the density function. Um, but always at, at right angles to that. So you get a sort of a polygon with a little twist at the end. Yeah. Um, so I want, I want this is done with sort of Gaussian density, these uh, results. Uh, and I want to see what might happen with this R to the N plus a constant and see what might happen with that as you change the constant. And I think start with the R squared to make it simple. So I've no idea yet. That's you know, the last couple of days reading. So I'm doing that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.